So today we're going to look at an old mine that I filmed quite a number of years back. The footage isn't real great, but I kind of stumbled across it and thought I would share it with you. We dug this mine out. Uh, it was completely collapsed in except for one little tiny hole into it. And um, the strange thing about this mine was it had a piece of culvert pipe laid into the front of it. And the old timers are not the ones that did this. A few miles away there was a seismograph and the other strange thing this seismograph was not there to detect earthquakes per se it was there to detect Russians setting off nuclear weapons they built this you know back in the time that they were scared to death of what Russia was doing so this particular area uh, the Sparta Oregon area is a very old granite. Uh, there's actually a couple different layers of granite in there. There's a top layer that's really decomposed which is really old granite and then below there is newer granite that uh, became a secondary intrusion in there and that's what created a lot of the gold. It's one of those rare areas where most of the gold, uh, the veins are in granite or decomposing granite and so there's another intrusion down below of newer granite that uh, pushed everything back up into that old granite. Seismically it's also very quiet, this old granite, at least that's what I'm told. And this seismograph uh, operated I think about, I'm trying to remember, I think it was around eight years. Uh, and they spread these sensors out all over the place, went into these old mines, stuck sensors in, in spots, so they had this wire strung out all across the ground up there and they dug their own pits up there and put uh, sensors in them. So when we dug that out, that old culvert was still there that the uh, seismologist folks put there. So evidently they come in with a backhoe or something, dug that out, laid that culvert in there just so they didn't have to worry about a collapse on them. When we dug this out, the old cable was actually still running back in there. So let's jump into the footage. Like I said, the footage isn't real great. The camera wasn't super great. And uh, I had my daughter with me. Um, I'm trying to figure out what age she was during this. She's now 21. Obviously, she's not 21 in this video. So let's jump into this and uh, look at this old mine. Now, the original audio on this is not very good. And in parts, I just turned it down and going to do voiceovers. Other parts, you'll be able to hear what we were doing. And this particular area we're standing in. That used to be a culvert pipe uh, was laid right in here. We tore that out when we dug it out with the tractor and it laid up up to this pipe and we left this in here just so it didn't collapse in. And as to the name of this mine, I'm really not sure what the real name of this is. It's real close to what the locals call the Morning Glory Mine, which I'm not even really sure that's the official name of that mine. But this mine is just a little ways away from it, and I'm really still not sure what the name of this is. I can't find it on any maps, and the uh, Boise State University had contacted me, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago about putting some new seismic sensors up in this area. In fact, they did put a new seismograph fairly close to here. How they got my name, I'm not real sure, but... He had contacted me, and the old documentation from the old seismology uh, department, either at Boise State or the USGS, I'm not sure where this document came from, showed this as the Bay Horse Mine, which I don't really think is correct, because there's a Bay Horse Mine about 20 miles from here. So I'm not, I don't think that was the name of this. I just think they picked a name and called it that. As you can see, this ground up here, this decomposed uh, granite is really unstable for the first 20 to 40 feet when you get into any of these mines up in this area they're all the same that first 20 to 50 feet back in is just extremely unstable ground I've uh, opened up at least four or five of these mines now 
and every one of them is the same exact way. That first 50 feet of decomposed granite is just terrible. You can see these two uh, humps here of uh, collapsed material that we had to climb over to get back in into the mine. And so here in a second, we'll uh, pick up the regular audio and go with it for a while. This is the worst part, right? I'm just trying to move some rocks so it's easier to go. There's Hannah. And here I had made it past those first two little clap spots and uh, my daughter was working her way over them. Those things were actually kind of a pain to climb over the way they, uh, the rock was pretty unstable right there. The interesting thing about this mine was I don't see any evidence of any drilling and blasting. Most of this was dug with picks and shovels. So away we go. Yep. I'm gonna leave the metal detector right there for now. Okay, this stuff. Just bring the rock hammer with you. Here we go back. Is it rock now? Yeah, this is rock rock. Very moist back in here. There's a little vein. Little cave in spot. Make sure there's no big overhangs that are going to fall on our head. This thing goes back further than I thought it did. They didn't use uh, much dynamite. You look, you look, that's been done with a pick. That one ran out of air. You what? I said that one ran out of air. Or not. I think I'm close to it. Might be. Oh, look, look at the old square now. The light keeps getting smaller. Yeah, it's, this light's not good for a real long time. I don't know if the light's no. Here's a dike coming through. Looks like basalt or something. There's another one. Yep, several of them right in a row. We're hoping we don't find a cougar back here. So far, I have not seen anything to indicate what they were digging for. Is heavy. Yes, it is. It's a little bit of a granite kind of stuff. I think they were hoping to come back in here and cut through a quartz vein. But I don't think they did. Some kind of what? A pack rat. There's that cable. When we were digging the entrance out, we hooked onto it with the tractor and pulled it part way out of here. You can, you can see, see yeah, you can see where I drug it. 
think we're getting pretty close to the end of this thing. Is that the end of that? Kind of looks like it. I don't see any promising sign of a vein. This here, I'm not sure what kind of rock that is. That's granite. Well, you can see an exposed face of granite. I was trying to see where they had that seismic sensor back in here. I don't know where the heck they had it. I would have thought they would have had. There's still drag marks. It's another dike that cut through. Watch out, it's the Yeah, this is. There's something stayed back here. There's a little bit of a vein there that they hit. Not much of one. It goes back. Wait, turn the light off. Cuts right through there. I th that's what they were trying to do was hit that vein. There's quartz all over the top of this hill. And I bet you that's what they were trying to do is hit a vein down in here. Looks like they got to here and just gave up finally. I don't see any drill holes. I thought when they got back into this granite, they might have drilled and blasted. There's Hannah in front of me. Hi, Anna. There's the entrance way out there. I'm guessing we're 300 feet back in here or so. It's kind of open to find a quartz vein and take a sample, but there's nothing here. So as we're walking out of here, give me a good chance to kind of fill in the blanks here. This hillside is not real tall, but it does have some quartz outcroppings uh, up above here a little ways. And in fact, right by the portal of this adit, uh, maybe 10 to 15 feet away, I opened up a quartz vein, uh, probably 8 to 10 inches wide. It did have some color in it, not a huge amount, but it does have some color in it. So I think this is the reason they uh, poked this at it back in here, was hoping to cut one of those veins so they didn't have to dig a incline shaft down. Now, I've heard it said that they don't dig, they didn't dig um, tunnels or adits where there was no gold or no vein. This is a perfect example of, yeah, they did, hoping to cut one. And so on this particular one, they uh, completely missed it. And in fact, I think if they would have dug just a little bit um, at a different angle, they probably would have cut one of these veins. But, you know, who knows what the, the thinking was at the time this was dug. And I'm not even sure what year this was dug. I'm guessing late 1800s, uh, maybe a little earlier than that. Just because there was no evidence of blasting in here. Uh, there's just pick marks everywhere in this mine. So they, uh, you know, they were dedicated on getting back into this uh, hillside. So to give a little more explanation of this at it, let's use Google Earth and uh, give this a little further look. Now, right here is the waste rock pile for this at it. The portal's right about there. And, um, oh, that didn't work very good, did it? Okay. It goes back at an angle about like this, back in the hillside. And you can see I'm already at like 135 feet right there. And I think this actually goes back to about right over here. And I think if they would have dug much further, they would have got back into that decomposed granite and poked out the other side of the hill. And I think they finally realized, hey, we're not finding anything. Let's give it up. So the, uh, the vein that I uncovered... It's right about there, and it kind of goes up at an angle about like this. And that's the one I found a little bit of gold in. 
And right up here on the top of this hill, right up in this area, there's all kinds of quartz laying around. I didn't find the real outcropping. There's uh, a couple little holes that they dug here and there trying to dig it up. And they may have uncovered it, but it's slumped back in. And up here, there's all kinds of quartz laying around. But most of these veins on this hillside run in a kind of an east-west direction. Um, if they would have run more of a north-south direction, I think they may have actually cut one or dug back at an angle about like this, they probably would have cut one or two of those veins. So why they chose to dig in like they did, I'm still not sure what the idea there was. It, it could have been inexperienced miners or, you know, who knows? It was a long time ago. You don't know what they were thinking at the time. So that's that at it. If you zoom out here a little bit, just a little ways away, and this is barely visible uh, now, right over in here is several inclines that go in. Uh, none of them are real deep. Uh, none of them are open anymore. And there used to be a uh, cabin um, or a house right here. And there used to be a little adit right there and one right in the bottom of the draw. That was what they called the Morning Glory Mine. At least that's what I've always heard it referred to. I can't find any documentation on that mine at all. So anyway, if you go up there and look at this now, uh, you will not see anything left here besides the, the waste rock pile when we were done. The landowner wanted us to uh, cover this back up. So all that uh, culvert pipe got shoved back down in the ditch and then filled back in with dirt. So it would be a real pain to dig that out now. Uh, you know, if somebody was really wanting to, they could. But there's really nothing to see at this uh, particular spot now. Well, I hope you enjoyed the short video. And uh, I thought somebody might get some enjoyment out of this old video. And it's almost Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody here in the United States. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.